Hi there, welcome back to our science review. That's this time we're going to review again the rules in predicting the electron's location. So in here, we're going to follow the three rules as uh, to help us or to guide us to easily predict the electron's location. So that's our problem, predicting the exact location of the electron. Now in the police, on the first list, that would be the police exclusion, exclusion principle it says here that there's no more than two electrons in an atom can occupy an orbital they must be in opposite directions as you can see here in my example this is the um what we know as the quantum mechanical model of the atom then you will see that uh, there's some orbitals here the first the second third fourth to fifth orbitals and it says here that for you to determine how many how many electrons can be placed per orbital, you will see here the maximum number of electrons. Example, for the first shell, which is this one, the maximum number of electrons it can hold is only two. So if that is a lithium, then you have to place the remaining uh, the remaining remaining electron to the second orbital because you're gonna place it here in the first. The first orbital can only hold two electrons that's maximum number then the second shell or second orbital he can or the maximum number is eight on the third is 18 on the fourth is 32 and in the fifth it's 50. so as you can see energy level increases as it gets further from the nucleus this is the nucleus another thing about this ball is exclusion is that electrons are said to be paired if two electrons in an atom can occupy an orbital and they are unpaired if only a single ele electron is present in the orbital like in lithium there's a single electron that doesn't have any partner right but in this in the first orbital you will see that they are in pair and you also need to if you're going to uh to remember the police exclusion remember the maximum number per orbital next rule is called the hence rule by friedrich hunt and he said that or it states that in a set of orbitals when electrons occupy orbitals of equal energy one electron enters each orbit until all the orbital contains one electron with parallel spins if you see here, this arrow represents the spins. So in Hence rule, it said that if this will be the orbitals, then it should be occupied with the electrons with the same spin. And then after that, it is time for you if there's more electrons present, then it represents another spin opposite to the, to the other one. So if that is clockwise, then the other one is counterclockwise. So you have to place it here on the first row again. Or if this is a box, since this is a spherical, remember that in the electron configuration, we are using this particular symbols representing also the uh, the number of orbital. If this will be the first and the second orbital, and therefore, if you're going to add them, the maximum number of electrons they can occupy. So in this case, the S and P here represents the orbital shape. There you go. So this is the proper, proper way to do that. The second electron will then be added to each orbital, pairing the spins of the first electrons, counterclockwise and then clockwise. If you're going to pair it look at these examples here like what i said if we're going to see the correct way on how to do it letter a is correct as well as letter c and what else letter e why is it b and d is not correct remember that you have to put the uh, spin here before you put it here on the first second and third 
you have to make them occupy all the boxes first. Same thing with letter D. It should be paired. So Hunt's rule is also known as the principle of minimum pairing and the principle of maximum multiplicity. That's the meaning of Hunt's rule. Again, look at the distribution of electrons in nitrogen. So if the atomic number of nitrogen is 7, you will see that based on this electron configuration, it's, it end, ends up with 2p, meaning second orbital with the principal shape and then the number of electrons. Remember, there are 7. If we're going to count it, one, two, three, four, five. It occupies all these boxes, and then the remaining two was placed here in one S and in two S. In oxygen, it's the same. Again, this arrow represents the spin of the electrons as well as the number of electrons per or the number of electrons present in an element so you will see that the atomic number of oxygen based on what you see here is a automatically and also based on the number of that's here representing the electrons so you will see that the electron configuration of oxygen is 1s2 2s2 2p4 then this particular number the superscript if you're going to add them, those are the numbers of electrons, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If we're going to apply the hands rule, remember that you have to occupy all the boxes here with the same spin before you place the another different spin. There you go. I have another example, and this is fluorine same thing that you're going to do with the oxygen this is for neon with 10 uh, atomic number and then remember that if we're going to go back with the polis the first orbital can only hold two electrons which is correct in the Hunt's rule then the second orbital which is 2s here and 2p 2 represents the second orbital can occupy the maximum number of eight so if we're going to count on the number of electrons it's two four six eight which is correct so the presence of unpaired electrons in an atom can be determined by its magnetic measurement the spin of the unpaired electrons and the orbital motion contribute to paramagnetism or in the atoms that contains unpaired electrons is drawn to the magnetic field like this an unpaired electron that is paramagnetism and here are the examples of uh, elements with or under or within an unpaired electron the atom is said to be diamagnetic if all electrons in an atom are paired as a result they are weakly repelled by the magnetic field so neon is a good example showing that it is diamagnetic remember at the end and on the other they are paired the third and the last row that's the f ball German word which means building up or construction. So this principle states that electrons feel first the orbitals of the lowest energy, which is the ground state, until added electrons occupy the available orbital of the higher energy, which is called the excited state. So if you're going to take a look at this example diagram, remember that the first orbit can hold this is the nucleus where you can find the proton and the neutron if there's neutron the first orbital 
remembering the polis, can only hold two, or the maximum number of electrons it can hold is two. That is for the first energy level. And the second is eight, and the third is 18, and then the fourth 32. If there is fifth, that would be 50. Orbitals with equal values of n plus one will be filled with the lower values first. So the progressive addition of electrons build up the atom. So I hope you learned something from uh, this rules regarding on how we can determine the location of electrons. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you learned something. Bye.